Now WSFA 12 Sports with Stephen Gutter. Well, opening with some coaching news, Troy announcing today that Al Pogue will return as cornerbacks coach. Pogue will enter his second season with the Trojans after helping lead Troy's secondary to major improvements in 2014. Troy's past defense jumped from 123rd in the nation to 36th last year with Pogue's help. He has been the head coach at Carver High School in St. Jude and also an assistant at Auburn University. Well, three of Alabama's top juniors are going pro. Amari Cooper, TJ Yeldon, and Landon Collins all making it official during a press conference today that they'll forego their senior seasons and enter the NFL draft. Coach Saban saying these moves speak volumes for Alabama's program, but the decisions to go pro, well, that's not easy. Just talking with my family and um, just talking to Coach, I thought I made the right decision. You know, running back to have a long life in the NFL, but uh, I felt like with all my injuries, it would be better if I get healthy and come out. We all had this dream and all these, and always had this um, had this mindset that um, we gonna work till we get where we want to get. Me, we all had a dream, and now we we are we making it come true. Well, Collins and Cooper are expected to be top 10 picks, while Yeldon is expected to go as early as the second round. Look who dropped by the station today to chat it up with us. Former Prattville Lion and current Georgia Tech starting quarterback Justin Thomas. Looking good in that letterman's jacket there. And what a season he had. Over 1,700 yards passing and over 1,000 yards rushing, leading Georgia Tech to 11 wins and the Orange Bowl title over Mississippi State. Thomas also won the Orange Bowl MVP in that game. Um, you know, it was a great feeling. You know, it was something I set out to accomplish. But like I tell everybody, I couldn't do it by myself. You know, all the guys around me was a big part of that award, and I appreciate all the effort they put into it just as much as, you know, everybody else. What coach has attended SEC Media Days the most? That's the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, 11th year with South Carolina, 23rd overall. He might be 70 years old, but he's still going strong. Uh, somebody told me the other day that I was the youngest coach in the SEC who's won four straight bowl games. But that's something for the critics to talk about when you don't go 11-2. and two. Well, let's see, how can I criticize South Carolina? But I feel good. I feel good where our team is. Uh, I feel like I got a lot of years left. Texas A&M's Kevin Sumlin making his fourth appearance at Media Days. Last year, it was life after Manziel. The Aggies, though, slipped to 8-5 and five overall. You know, where we were, we had to get better defensively. We've made that change. I think uh, we talked about, um, you know, where we are in the run game. We've made that change and, and put an emphasis on those two things. Last year's surprise team of the SEC, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, rising all the way to the top spot in the nation before sliding late in the year. Dan Mullen saying today he wants the same success, with a better finish. But I think they're desperate to get back, and I think that's the standard and the expectation they want to live up to is a team that's going to find a way to be playing a game late in the season for an opportunity to win the SEC West and then go win that game. Final team on day two, the Tennessee Volunteers with third-year head coach Butch Jones. Expectations are high, especially with the talented signal caller Joshua Dobbs. He's our quarterback. Our players believe in him. He's a winner. He's uh, extremely competitive. So going into this season, this is the first time where we really we, we know who our starting quarterback is now. The Vols finished 7-6 in 2014 with a Tax Slayer Bowl victory. From SEC Media Days, Stephen Gunner, WSFA 12 Sports. Now WSFA 12 Sports with Stephen Gunner. Well, if you're like me, you started the day off a little bit more upbeat because college football season is back, and it is, of course, game week. And kicking off the game week press conferences is Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide, a showdown to open the year on Saturday in Texas against Wisconsin. Saban saying today he wants the Tide to play like a scary team. You know, you could say, are we going to sort of play – with a reputation of Alabama teams of the past, or is this team going to create an identity of its own of being a dangerous team? And I don't think anybody really is ever afraid of you until you become a, a, a scary team in terms of how you execute what you do, the discipline you play with, the grit that you have. Now that tie D is supposed to be pretty scary this year. In other news out of Tuscaloosa, the release of the depth chart, and as you might expect, all five quarterbacks listed as potential starters this weekend. Although during that press conference we just heard from, Saban did mention Jake Coker, Cooper Bateman, and Alec Morris as the three guys getting the bulk of reps at practice recently. We'll have more from Saban tonight at 10. Now WSFA 12 Sports with Stephen Gutter. 
Hey, welcome back, and we are live from Alabama State. The Hornets taking on the Alcorn State Braves. We are in the first quarter of this one. It's also the home debut of new head coach Brian Jenkins. I'll get out of the way. We are 214 to go in the first quarter. Players are out on the field. Alabama State has the ball right now. This game is tied 7 to 7 with Alabama State across midfield looking to take a lead here in the first quarter. But a lot of football to talk about, so let's get to it. Jumping to the thriller on the plane. Sixth ranked Auburn getting the scare of all scares against Jacksonville State today. Auburn trailing in the third, 10 to 6 until Jeremy Johnson finds Rock Thomas and Rock puts on the Jets. 51 yard touchdown pass. Tigers would take the lead 13 to 10 on that play. But in the fourth, JSU regains the lead. Troy Main Pope, a five-yard score around right in. 20 to 13, Gamecocks with the lead with over six minutes to go in the game in the fourth quarter. And it stays that way, 20 to 13, until about 40 seconds to go. Jeremy Johnson hits Melvin Ray and check out that grab from Mr. Ray. That ties it at 20 all with 39 seconds left. And this one goes to overtime, 20 to 20. Auburn with possession first. The Peyton Barber Show dives up the middle for a four-yard touchdown. Auburn takes a 27 to 20 lead. So Jacksonville State takes over on fourth down, half to score a touchdown. Eli Jenkins' pass is caught but out of bounds. Auburn survives the scare, beating Jacksonville State 27 to 20 in overtime on the Plains. What a game! We'll have more from the Plains tonight at 10. But now to Tuscaloosa, second-ranked Crimson Tide taking on Middle Tennessee. Bama hitting the scoreboard first in this game, and it's through the air. Jake Coker connects with Robert Foster, 7 to nothing, Crimson Tide in front. Second quarter, it's 7 to 3. Middle Tennessee State put a field goal on the board, but it's Derrick Henry time, the star from the Wisconsin game. Two-yard touchdown, Bama up 14 to 3. And later in the second, Kenyon Drake's turn to carry the rock, a shovel pass, and he is racing down the sideline, 69 yards down to the two-yard line, Mr. Drake, and that leads to a one-yard touchdown from Henry. Bama would lead 23-3 to at the half, and this one has just gone final, 37-10, to Alabama moving to 2-0 on the young season. We'll hear from Coach Saban tonight at 10. Stephen Gunner returning to his alma mater. Stephen, a member of the class of 2003 at Andalusia High. Take it away, Stephen. Hey, thanks a lot, Jess. What a great ball game we have here to close out the regular season here in Covington County, Andalusia versus Strawn. Yes, I was an 03 graduate here. On this field behind me, I played very little back in the day with the Bulldogs, but what a great contest we have. Strawn, Andalusia, both clinching spots in the playoffs already. Andalusia, the region uh, two class 4A champion. Strawn coming in as the number four seed. Joining me now is the Strawn head coach, first year head coach, Chris Wilson. Coach, you guys know in two weeks you're in the playoffs. What does this game against Andalusia mean for this program that now you guys are on a three game winning streak? Yeah, absolutely. We're just trying to finish the season strong. And uh, obviously this is a huge game for the community, you know, for the fans at Andalusia and the fans at Strawn. You know, it's just bragging rights for the year. Uh, but like you said, we've kind of secured our place in the playoffs, and that's the bigger picture. But, you know, we'd we love to have the bragging rights in the county, so it's a huge game for our guys. Coach Wilson is first year with the Strawn Tigers, and joining me on my other side is Andalusia coach Trent Taylor. Coach, you, you coached 25 years at Strawn. This is your first year at Andalusia. Talk about what this game means for your kids and also maybe for you on a personal level. Well, obviously it's a playoff-type atmosphere. You can hear the fans already as the team played the field, and, you know, that's big when you get to this point in the year. You know, personally, you know, obviously I know a lot of those kids, you know, like I said, been there 25 years and coach just about every one of them. So, you know, some mixed emotions, you know, but, uh, you know, certainly I'm back home and, and glad to be here. It is Strawn in Andalusia tonight. Kickoff in about 30 minutes. We'll have more from the fever tonight at 10 o'clock. Now, WSFA 12 Sports with Stephen Gutter. Derrick Henry's hunt for the Heisman will finish tonight. The winner will be announced in New York City in a little over an hour. The Bama Star running back is up against Christian McCaffrey, the running back of Stanford. Clemson's Deshaun Watson, the quarterback there for the Tigers. And Henry, of course, trying to cap off an amazing week. One week ago today, the SEC title game, he was named MVP. He also won the Walter Camp Award, the Doak Walker Award, and the Maxwell Awards all on Thursday night at the College Football Award Show. The Heisman ceremony begins at 7, and about 8 o'clock the winner will be announced. We'll have a recap tonight at 10 o'clock. The Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game has been lopsided for the past few years. The Alabama All-Stars have won seven straight, but this year, the first time the game is being played in the state of Mississippi, in Hattiesburg, at 
Southern Miss. Early on, it looked like the Bama All-Stars would make it eight straight wins. Opening drive for Mississippi. Gordo's Ben Davis with a pick six, 76 yards the opposite way for the touchdown. 7-0 Alabama out in front. But Mississippi would quickly tie it up at 7-all. But back comes Alabama offensively. Tyler Johnston, the quarterback from Spanish Fort finds TJ Simmons from Clay Chalkville. Bama regains the 14 to 7 lead. 28 points actually scored in the first quarter alone. Here's Mississippi. Keon Howard finds AJ Brown. 35 yard touchdown. That would tie the game 14 all in the first quarter. Mississippi would take the lead in the third quarter with another Brown touchdown, but put it away in the fourth. Howard to DeKalen Metcalf. 32 yard touchdown catch. That would be his second of the day. And Mississippi ends its skid, beating Alabama today 28 21 in Hattiesburg. Metcalf and Brown named MVPs for Mississippi. Ben Davis, the MVP for Alabama, as Alabama falls short, but still a great week for the guys. WS of A12 Sports Director Stephen Gunner. And Stephen, one team season ends tonight, the other goes on to that title game. You're exactly right, Sally. One team tonight will move on from inside of AT&T Stadium and advance to Arizona, maybe a little bit warmer in Arizona than it's been in Dallas these last few days. I'm going to get out of the way because, as we said, we are inside of AT&T Stadium, and you can see some pregame preps going on right now. A 100-yard-long American flag that I'm sure you will see uh, right before kickoff when they do the national anthem. Uh, they're practicing their routine building up to tonight's kickoff. Alabama sideline to our right, Michigan State's to our left. We are in the Alabama end zone. That's the scene right now uh, at 4 o'clock from inside of AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Now, earlier this week, I had a chance to talk, of course, football with some of the Bama Crimson Tide players and uh, coaches. Lane Kiffin told me this week, I asked him if he's opened up the offense in year number two in Tuscaloosa. He said, hey, the exact opposite. We've had to dial it back a bit with this year's personnel. Uh, had to replace nine starters. Obviously, new year with a quarterback. Lost arguably the best receiver in the history of the SEC. So, um, and a lot of really good, savvy players. So, we kind of closed it down a little bit more um, and had a feeling we'd be better on defense this year than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so, knew the best the best way to win is if we're going to be really good on defense is not turn the ball over, run the ball, and, and play in a controlled passing game. So, we've kind of closed it in a little bit more. And we're looking forward to seeing what Lane Kiffin will draw up and dial up against Michigan State tonight because Michigan State's defense pretty solid as they've been for a number of years now under Mark D'Antonio. Top 25 total defense, Sally. So we're expecting a great kickoff tonight, 7 o'clock from AT&T Stadium. Sally? No doubt. And, Stephen, Alabama was in this position last year. Did not finish the season like they wanted to, but does that experience last year help them this season? And that's something, Sally, that's been talked about quite a bit this week. Uh, the not finishing last year, the word for the Crimson Tide this year is finished. They're focused. They're ready to go. As Derek Henry said earlier this week, this team knows what to expect in this semifinal atmosphere at a massive venue against a very good number three ranked team in Michigan State. Uh, they've passed along tips to the younger guys, players that might not have had an impact or impact role last year's team that now have one this year or incoming freshmen that play. Uh, the, the veteran guys have been giving tips about how do you prepare for a game like this and it seems like Alabama is focused and ready. Stephen Gunner joins us live from AT&T Stadium with more. Stephen? Hey, Charlie, we've been talking all about the countdown, but uh, it's been moved back, actually. We just had the official word. 7.20 will be the new kickoff time for the Crimson Tides game with Michigan State here inside of AT&T Stadium. We're trying to dodge the, the punts from J.K. Scott as we actually speak right now. Hey, listen, the teams that are out, the specialists are out. They're fielding punts. They're, they're kicking the ball off, field goals. Adam Griffith, you can name it all right now, but we are feeling the energy build up. But as we said, 7.20 is the kickoff. Now, I reached out to three-time national champion Nico Johnson from Andalusia now with the New York Giants. He told me he thinks that Alabama will come out on fire. Michigan State's a great team, but when you give Nick a month almost to prepare for one team, he is very difficult to beat, and that is from Nico Johnson, the former Crimson Tide linebacker now in the NFL. That's just one of many uh, players that have moved on to the NFL who have a lot of high praise for Nick Saban and what this team can do. 7:20 kickoff, Michigan State and Alabama. Charlie?